humanity and they rejoice also. and that's the extent of uh, what Christian idolatry is all about friendly spirits just to digress for just a moment you mentioned three different categories and the friendly spirits are the ones that love to in impersonate oh, yeah. mm. uh, a being a historian yeah. or something in, yeah, your ex specialize in, that. in your experiences in the praise services or in the worship room or the other places where you were, any of the places you were, mm -hmm. did you ever witness a, an event where necromancy or even uh, something that would be popularly called channeling today mm -hmm. took place, where you actually heard the voice of someone in response to someone's oh, yeah. questions? Yeah, a number of times, but there was one time in particular that fascinated me because... <clears throat> Um, it was unique in, in one way. The priest told us that there was a French historian that was affiliated with Montreal, uh, University of Montreal, which is a French university, in, and the English university is McGill. So the University of Montreal is the French uh, uh, university. And this man was from Paris, but he's affiliated with the University of Montreal, is the French uh, uh, university. And this man was from Paris, but he's affiliated with the university. And he wanted to have some details in regards to uh, Napoleon Bonaparte and one of his generals. So, by the way, there are also, in other parts of the world, elite spirit worshippers like the group that we had in Montreal. And he mentioned there that, uh, he said, you guys are fortunate when uh, my friend and I uh, went in because you right in time to see something very interesting. My friend there is having his devotions and the worship room of the gods and he will uh, use uh, a trance medium to converse with uh, certain demon spirits that uh, will inform him uh, in regards to ancient history by Napoleon. And sure enough, we went down there and uh, somebody came up and said he's ready to for the, the session and we went down there and uh, he said he would need uh, three people. Um, you would need three people, but he wanted five people that volunteer to be the channel for the spirit. Okay, so he was three was chosen. Three of them were chosen there, and he had to go back and sit down. And uh, the man shook his head like, a little bit like this. His eyes went glazed. And he stayed at it for a half hour. And the spirit spoke to him. He said, I'm a, I'm a spirit counselor. And what would you like to know? And uh, the, uh, he, he had a clipboard, the historian, and asked him some questions. The historian was from Paris. Yeah. And he was wanting information. S some detailed information. Uh, about Napoleon. Napoleon Bonaparte and one of his generals. And so he asked the questions of one of these human beings mm -hmm. that was channeling oh yeah the voice changed and everything the voice changed the, the person completely okay. and, uh, and it identified itself as a spirit guy oh, yeah. spirit counselor yeah okay a spirit counselor and yeah. and then proceeded to tell him all the events that he was asking yes. answer his question and there was a, a certain question that was asked and the spirit counselor said i will have lord remy and lord alphonse Duplicate, in other words, the, con the uh, dialogue that had taken place. Oh, a and little, the two little other, drama. Yeah, a little and the two other uh, men, men uh, fulfilled what he was looking for. But the one thing that interests me is uh, the mayor of Montreal, Cavalier Hood. During World War II, at the beginning of the war, he was very controversial when it regards to, to the war effort. He, was, he would tell the French-speaking boys not to go into the uh, armed service, you see, because you're going to go and shed your blood for the British, you know, <laughs> and uh, we're, you know, we're their servants, so to speak, and all that, and he didn't want them to go in, into war, and they put him for, in prison. He was jailed for the, for the length of the war. This. Now, the man said, I would like to have you tell me to the spirit uh, to give me part of the speech that was given by Camelien Hood on, on these uh, steps of the Montreal City Hall on a certain date 
There are different versions of what has taken place. And you, Lord, would know the, the exact one. Now, the mayor of Montreal was still alive. Was still alive. And this historian is asking mm -hmm. what was actually said at a speech. Yeah. Okay. The spirit counselor said, I'm sorry, I can't help you. All of my activities and my people have taken place in Europe. However, after my departure, uh, our departure, other spirits will come and help you. And sure enough, the, 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 the guy vibrated a little bit and he's back and he said, boy, how long? He said, 12, 20 minutes. He uses a channel. So they, uh, again, the spirit entered into him and uh, the spirit said he was a spirit counselor that could give him the information that he was looking for. So, um, again, it was given verbally and it was the voice of Camellia Hood. Now, how did you know that it was the voice? Well, because of the fact, you see, I was a youngster in those days, <laughs> just about ready to go into the army. And uh, Camille, we used to listen to the uh, radio. We had no television in those days, so it was only radio and read the newspaper. And all the speeches of Camille made and all of it was on the radio all the time. And in those days, they had no tape recorders, just as we have now. So they would, Camille would have to go to the uh, Canadian Broadcasting Studio, yeah. where they made a record, a real phonograph record. And then he played it over and over, you know, for the rest so of the So you day, listened you know. to those as a teenager before you went into oh, the army. So you yeah. knew his voice. So his voice was really good. So uh, I said to uh, uh, George, he was sitting next to me, he said, isn't it amazing? He said, if you think that's amazing, wait, he says, until the spirits uh, impersonate one of the departed people that you know personally, like an uncle or a brother or a sister or something like that. He says, that is unique. But that's the way it was. You are able to reproduce a, a voice, man, and the, the uh, just perfection. Mm -hmm. The spirits are exceedingly proud of this. Because, and, and this also uh, was right up my alley, the priest said that as the times on this planet gets more and more difficult and calamities of all kinds are striking the planet more and more frequently demon spirits are going to impress people with, with the, the importance of Sunday sacredness Roger when I was a teenager back in the 1970s I remember a song that came out talking about the age of Aquarius mm -hmm. and since then we've seen the development of the new age and I wondered if back when you were involved in spirit worship, if they talked about New Age at all. Oh, yes. It was a big thing that uh, was coming up. One of the uh, major deceptions of the last days. Mm. And the priest uh, told us, uh, he had, we talked uh, quite a while, and uh, then he said, uh, could I have a little bit more of your time? I want to do something very fascinating. He says, the grain plane, the master's grain plane, for harvesting the nations, uh, for, for harvesting the multitudes of the earth into his cause just before the close of the great controversy between the forces of good and evil. So we continued, you know, after we uh, expressed ourselves that we were deeply interested to know more about the activities of spirits. And he said, it's going to be done in a unique manner. This, this grand plan is, is, is going to take people, people are going to eat the stuff because he says, spirits, demon spirits will declare themselves to be inhabitants of far distant planets in the galaxies that are coming to warn the inhabitants of planet Earth of the impending destruction of the planet unless something seriously proper is done to avoid it. Mm. And he went on saying, so saying that uh, uh, they will claim uh, to have out-of-body experiences. Are you familiar with out-of-body experiences? Mm -hmm. I've read about In other words, so a person's uh, that some persons are supposed to be able to, you know, uh, they believe in their immortal soul. Astral immortal soul projection. Pro yes, right. Goes into different parts of the world and sees things and come back and then they write all about it. You know. Okay, so, uh, due to the fact that the millions of the earth people believe in having people having an immortal soul, it has to be readily, readily accepted when the spirits will, through a trans medium, converse with influential people of the land, you see. 
Now, what is a trance medium? It's a channeler today. What what is known today as a channeler? Channeler, yeah. Okay. Uh, Shirley MacLaine's experience of getting involved with spiritism and with the uh, inhabitants, supposed inhabitants of far distant planets in the galaxies. I taped the whole thing three hours. And you were hearing the fulfillment of exactly. what this high priest had said yeah. 45 years ago. Yeah, exactly. So, he went on explaining about the fact that the spirits will show themselves willing to give valuable guidance that will not only help people avoid the discredited planet, but it will cause it to enter into a higher state of existence. For instance, he said, the spirits will, will uh, promise and this is a big word, promise, that if their recommendations are followed carefully, they will usher in a glorious new age of peace and prosperity, and there, there'll be, um, well, there'll be no more wars, you see, uh, there'll be no more famines, there'll be no more uh, people getting uh, unhappy with one another, neighbors will love neighbor, and uh, social unrest will not take place no more. It'll be sure unrest will not take place no more. It'll be sure uh, there'll be <laughs> perfect happiness for a thousand years. That's what the spirit is going to promise. And Almost we, like the Garden of Eden created all over uh -huh. again. And now we find that a lot of preachers are pre are preaching the great age of uh, glorious new age of victory, victory over wars, victory over social unrest, victory over famines, and victory over all kinds of. Uh, and he used the words new age to describe mm -hmm. what was coming. It would be a glorious new age, yeah. And uh, this is exactly what the movement is all about today. Mm. And he went on and said, as I said a little earlier, <laughs> that as life on this planet becomes more and more difficult and calamities will strike the planet more and more frequently, the spirits at that time is go are going to put all their effort to impress religious leaders, to bring before the, the masses of the earth the, the sacredness of Sunday. See? He will teach Sunday sacredness. And with the religious leaders, looking forward to a thousand years of perfect peace on earth, they will put all their effort into it. Then laws will be passed by governments uh, yeah, one, one person asked, what's going to happen about people that don't believe in the Spirit's uh, recommendation? <laughs> the priest said, that would be no problem at all. Laws will be passed by governments that will force people to go along with it, regardless of whether they believe in it or not. And, he says, the law enforcement officers will explain to people, make it clear, that such a law is necessary to assure the well-being of all people. He says, the laws will be passed with no effort at all. And then he, he went on and he, and, and he said about the fact that um, uh, the venerability of the sun, which in ages past was such an irritant to the Creator, all the, these the great nations and other nations, the smaller ones, were all involved in sun worship. And in those centuries, the Creator found that teaching of the worship of the sun to be a terrible irritant. And he said, it is going again to take place, but not in worshiping the sun, in remembering Sunday to keep it holy. He made a statement I would never forget. He says, by the observance of the day upon which the master, Satan, has placed the unction of his authority and power, He receives homage, regardless of whom people claim to worship. Isn't that something? Mm. So, can you understand now why I had 28 Bible studies in one week and started to, to go to church on Sabbath and I never missed since uh, until I began to sick? No. The issue of a day of worship came up in that meeting. Mm -hmm. Was Sunday the only day mentioned? Well, you see, the, the priest mentioned yes about the fact Satan has chosen Sunday as his day. The Creator has chosen the seventh day of the week. Lucifer has chosen to call his day 
the first day of the week, Sunday. 